everyone. Welcome to the 47th Annual Toronto International Film Festival. We're back. Thank you so much for being here. Thank you so much for your support. It means the world to us. I can't actually see anything right now, but I can hear you, and it's fantastic. Thank you for your support. My name is Dorota Lech, and I'm the lead curator of TIFF's Discovery Program, which is a showcase of new talent and cinema from around the world. We have a long history of championing the first and second films of exceptional filmmakers, including Chantal Ackerman, Julie Dash, Ilda Cohen Yeti, Barry Jenkins, Yorgos Lanthimos, Jafar Panahi, Trinti Minha, Steve McQueen, Michael Haneke, Christopher Nolan, Lav Diaz, Alfonso Cuaron, Athena Rachel Tangari, Warwick Thornton, Marin Ada, Joaquin Trier, David Gordon Green, Pablo Lorraine, Valeska Griesebach, and Jean Marc Vallet, to name a few. Discovery is a place to find work that is bold, distinctive, adventurous, and above all passionate. And as such, it is my true honor to be presenting The Inspection by Elegance Bratton as our opening night film. I also want to add that this is the first time in TIFF's history that we've ever shown a film in the Royal Alexandra Theater. And I could not think of a more beautiful place to be sharing this film with the world. Thank you. The inspection plays as part of the Discovery Program, which is generously sponsored by Dyson. It is eligible for the People's Choice Award, which you could vote for at tiff.net slash vote. Elegance Bratton was born in Jersey City, New Jersey. He has directed the shorts Walk For Me in 2016, as well as Buck in 2020, and the feature documentary Peer Kids, which is amazing, and you should absolutely all check it out. It's beautiful. This is his narrative feature debut, and you are in for such a treat. We would like to thank A24 for providing us with the film, and without further ado, please welcome to the stage, Elegance Bratton. Wow. 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 Okay. I promised myself I wouldn't cry until after you watched the movie, so, but you guys are getting me close. Thank you, thank you so much for that welcome and those kind words. Um, I just wanted to kind of let you guys know where this movie comes from for me and to introduce you to our illustrious cast. I, first of all, this is a movie about a young, homeless, black gay man who joins the Marine Corps in order to win back his mother's love, but ultimately learns how to respect himself. This is a journey that I also happen to go on as well. And as much as this story is inspired by my story, this film is really for anyone who's ever felt disregarded, for anyone who's ever felt invisible, for anyone who's ever felt like there was nothing for them to look forward to. I'm here to tell you that that is not true. In fact, it's very much the opposite. The things that people tell you that say your, your weakness, you're too femme, you're too fat, you're too black, you're too gay, you're too poor, right? All of that is a lie. Everything that you think is good can actually happen. Everything that you love about yourself is actually true. And everything that people say is your weakness is really your superpower. And that's what this film exists for, is to remind people of that, um, you know, I love my mother very, very much. And I made this movie as well to reach people like her who abandon their kids because of sexuality, to remind them that it's wrong and hopefully to provide a chance for a conversation to be had on screen that maybe can't be had in real life. So it's the reason why I made this movie. I'm so excited to share it with you all. And without further ado, I'd like to introduce you to my incredible producers, Effie Brown and Chester Algernon Gordon. I just, I know I'm not supposed to take too long, but I just want to say, Effie, thank you for believing in this project. Thank you for helping us to make it. You did a lot of hard work on this. 
and that you guys don't get a chance to be celebrated, and we've got a room full of people, okay. and I want them all to know <laughs> what you did. <laughs> and Please. And I have to, I have to say thank you to the love of my life, my partner and everything, my hope, my dreams, my all, Chester Algernon Gordon. Thank you. Thank you. This film is a product of the love that we share and our tenacity to show people that black love really can change the world for the better. Right. Now, I want you to meet the cast. This is the phenomenal Aubrey Joseph. Get out here. The phenomenal. And all that ice is real too. All that ice is real. <laughs> And just the captivating, beguiling, and troublesome McCall Lombardi. Get out here, man. She is an icon of cinema, a true movie star, a legend, an icon, the baddest bitch in the world. Gabrielle, you can get out here and say hello to your fans. Come on now. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you so much. We wouldn't be out here, out here without Gabby. Thank you so much, Gabby. And finally, the man, the myth, the legend, pound for pound, who I believe the greatest actor in the world, Jeremy Pope. Get out here, brother. Get out here, man. Get out here. Get out here, bro. So, thank you so much for this wonderful welcome, and please stick around for the Q&A. Thank you, guys. Let's welcome back to the stage, Elegance Bratton, Effie Brown, Chester Algarl Gordon, Jeremy Pope, Gabrielle Union, Aubrey Joseph, and McCall Lombardi. Congratulations, it's beautiful. You are the first audience in the world to see this film. I'm gonna let everyone catch their breaths. And while you catch your breaths, I'm going to ask some questions. Sure. Elegance, when did you start writing your story and what was that process like for you? Well, I started this story uh, about six years ago. I had uh, finished uh, my house, my TV series, and I finally had a little bit of money. So I kind of, you know, I was in film school at the time and, uh, you know, it just felt like I needed to tell a story that um, was personal and that had something to offer, you know, a country that I saw to be divided, you know, um, right and left, red and blue, white and black, male and female. And I wanted to make a movie that could show people the importance of honoring the person to the left and to your right, even if you don't necessarily agree with them, even if you don't see yourself like them, you know? You gotta honor that, you know? Thank you. And that's, that's why I made the movie. You've assembled an incredible cast and crew, and I'd love for you to talk about when you brought these folks on. What was that process like? Well, 
uh, casting a movie, at every stage of making a movie is a full making, the, like everything is making the movie. You're always, you get to, uh, you think you've overcome a hill, and then here comes a mountain, and then you got to the mountain, and here comes a mountain range. And then after a mountain range, here comes Armageddon. So, <laughs> um, but the casting process, you know, from the very beginning, I knew that it had to be you, Jeremy. Like your work moved me so much on Hollywood. It moved me so much. And, um, and once, but honestly, the, the, you know, I have to give credit where credit to the piece that made it all kick in the gear was Gabby, because I just, you're such a star, and you're such an incredible talent. And, um, <sighs> I'd love to hear from everyone on stage. Sorry, sorry, sorry. No, you're, you're amazing. You're, this is please, wonderful. We love you. Please, please. Say Effie, <laughs> Effie and Chester, can you tell us about coming onto the project and, and what, what was it like getting this film off the ground for both of you? Oh, for us? Yeah. It was amazing. It was actually a lot of hard work, but it was really amazing. But I have to say, I'm, we're just so excited and I have to give love to A24. Yeah. Thank you so much. Because we know from being producers, it's hard to get a film like this done, but they saw the vision and amplifying the voices and all of that good stuff. And I want to thank Game Changer Films. Got to give a shout out. There you go. Yes. And, uh, and I just want to say thank you so much, Elegance, for trusting us with your movie. And thank you all, because I know going to Mississippi. I know it's Gabrielle Union wants to go to Mississippi. You know, in the middle of the summer, it was real great, guys. Um, you know, but it was beautiful, and I really appreciate you guys doing this. But it was a labor of love, but it was also, we knew immediately what a gym this was from, and, and you trusting us with your, with your story. Thank you so much, Effie, thank you. And, and I talked over, so go I, I back what Effie say. <laughs> and that's why we get thank along. You. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> you well, Jeremy, you are no stranger to Broadway, but the camera loves you, and I'd love for you to talk about how you approach this role. Um, well, thank you all for seeing the film tonight. Um, as you can tell, it's a very... <laughs> it's a very emotional, emotional feeling in this moment, but I'm very grateful. Um, I fell in love with Elegance. We met over Zoom, and we just talked and we talked and we talked, and to have a story that centers a black, queer individual is so important and felt so necessary and was so healing for me. So I'm just grateful that I could be the vessel to tell your story. Um, that's all I have to say tonight. Thank you. <laughs> and Gabrielle, you are an ardent activist for LGBTQ plus rights. What were your initial reactions to reading the script and how did you approach this character? I was like, oh, this isn't me. Um, <laughs> I've got some suggestions, but um, I don't think this is me. Um, and then I said, well, who's the kid? He said, well, we're hoping for Jeremy Pope. I said, well, I'm in, I'll figure it out. Um, and then I DM'd you, I think I DM'd you on Twitter as one does. Um, but uh, I mean, I'm not sure if you guys are, uh, are all familiar with, uh, with my family um, and our journey. Uh, but my husband who's here tonight with me. Yeah, yeah, but, uh, yeah. Champion. <laughs> for, for us, we, 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 we're, we're 10 toes down. We don't play about our children. And we don't play about your children. And in this movie, having to embody someone with such darkness uh, was a challenge. And, um, you know, and then I go on Twitter, as one does, and I see more darkness. And I had to figure out how to find Inez's humanity. Because I figured if I could figure out her humanity and figure out my way around this character, perhaps just calling folks trash uh, might not be the best way to um, help other parents not see their children as disposable. Um, you know, as parents, we're the first people to love our babies, to see our babies and love our babies. So when those same people are the ones to reject those babies, it, is, it not only destroys families, it destroys communities. So this whole film is about community building 
Um, and that is our goal, that was my goal, um, to go into the darkest parts of my soul and to try to, to be a part of the healing. And uh, so everyone can see their children as deserving of peace, opportunity, protection, belief, love. None of our children are disposable in trying to shove that down and, and to bring Ines forward was uh, a challenge of a lifetime, but this is the most impactful and important work I've ever done. So I'm just grateful to be here. <laughs> Aubrey and McCall, there, there's incredible camaraderie in the film, and I wonder if you have any stories of the set. What, what was it like filming with these guys? Please be kind. <laughs> Lighten the air a little bit. Is, that a, is there a story? <laughs> there's millions. Yeah. A feeling, a story. Go ahead. <laughs> Red Lobster. Yeah. There we go. Yeah, I would definitely say it was the first time I've ever been on a set where I actually really had a camaraderie with my, you know, fellow actors. You know, like these two guys were, I was with them every second of the day. I was with them every hour on set and then every hour off set, you know what I mean? So I would say that it was, it was just getting to know the guys and you know, it went on and off screen and, and that was like the most beautiful part for me. Uh, and it was also just seeing Elegance shine, you know, seeing Jeremy shine, you know, that, that was the, the most beautiful part that I could take away from it. You know. Thank you so much. Of course. During a Q and A, when an L, when a director whispers in your ear, "Oh, I have a story," you just you have to cue it up. So. Okay. So fairly early in the production, maybe like a week or so in, we were on the rifle range, and you know, I, what I can say is I've done shorts prior to this, and I did a fiction doc prior to this, but it feels like every minute of this movie was another level of scaling up from what I had done before. And I felt like we were on range and I was talking to you. And I remember thinking to myself, Jeremy, like, I did it. I, I'm directing now. He gets it. He gets it. You know? He gets it. And I, was like, I walked back to Video Village and I'm like, cool, I got this. Right? And then I hear, hey, elegance, hey, elegance, hey, elegance. And it's an ensemble of actors. And I turn around and all nine of their hands are raised. <laughs> and I'm like, oh, shit. I've got to have this feeling with Jeremy with everybody. <laughs> you know? like, and it was crazy, you know? And then like, you know, I went around, gave notes to everybody. I'm like, okay, cool, we're with this, we're with this. And then I walked back to Video Village and then the cinematographer, Lachlan Milne, genius, raises his cool. hand. And then the, the costume designer, uh, then the production designer, everybody's got their hands up. I'm like, oh, all 150 people have to have this experience. And I mean, I think I figured it out, but you know, it was a challenge. <laughs> and, and I do want to call out, you have other incredible actors that aren't with us, Bokeem yes. Woodbine, Raul Castillo, incredible cast. Yeah, Bokeem uh, is an icon and a legend, and I just, you know, I had the biggest crush on Bokeem when I was a 14-year-old, and <laughs> my 14-year-old self is really proud of this, and um, Iman Esfandi, I don't know if anybody's recording this, but Iman, you're a prince, um, uh, Andrew Kai, we love you. Uh, Shout out to our casting director, Kim Coleman. Kim Coleman, you're the truth. It was amazing. So as I mentioned, you're the first audience to see this film, and we'd love to hear some questions, not comments, from you. Um, it's impossible to see you, so raise your hands and wave them. Yes, right here. Lots of compliments happening. Lots of compliments. Everyone loves you. I'll just repeat the question. So the question is directly for Gabrielle, and it's for you to speak specifically about your range and how many roles you've had that are quite different from this, and if you could talk about that. Well, to prepare for Bring It On. Um, <laughs> <laughs> uh, 
<laughs> yeah. <laughs> no, um... <laughs> No, but, but honestly, this, I've, I've never been called upon to do this kind of work. Not that I couldn't do it, but people tend to think of me for other things. And honestly, it was really just elegance saying, no, I believe you can do this. And it started with him giving me his mother's Bible and a few of her um, personal belongings. And that's, I just sat with it. Um, I sat with it. I prayed on it. I meditated on it. Um, and then I had to uh, do her justice um, because there's so much love, obviously. I had to find the love through those dark parts, which caused me to have to examine some of my dark parts, some of the things that I, I assumed I wouldn't have anything in common with um, someone who, who cheats their child this way. And it turns out I had some demons to exercise. Uh, so with a lot of therapy, <laughs> I was able to work out some of those demons um, on screen, which I've never been called upon to do, which was um, scary and uh, dark, very, very dark. Yes, in the middle. The question is, was there a boot camp for the actors? Y yes. There was. There was. We got to Mississippi. Um, we got to Mississippi. Full stop. <laughs> yeah, we, we had boot camp. We, we, I remember one morning we got up at like four in the morning. God, it was brutal. I had to like remind elegance. You know we're acting, right? All the time. Like, yeah, like, <laughs> so we did have a boot camp, um, but it, it honestly brought us all so, so much closer. Um, you know, it was, it was unlike any film experience I've ever had. Um, shaving our heads, mm -hmm. like working with these guns and learning, you know, the, just, it was the ditties, it was, it was tough. But we, we pulled through. I think we pulled through. <laughs> I just have to give a shout out to our military advisor, Octaya Jones. Octaya. Um, sh she's amazing. Short, quick story, uh, Octavia, I actually served with Octavia, and um, I never knew her first name, because when we served together in Hawaii, she was a sergeant and I was a private, so to me, she was Sergeant Jones, right? So I have been calling her Octavia for years, because I've never actually said her first name to her before. We've known each other for almost 13 years. So when she got on set, she just came from Paris Island as a drill instructor, she just finished her duty. So I said to her, I was like, listen, when you get on this set, I want you to put your foot in these actors' asses. You know what I'm saying? The way you do it when you're in boot camp. And she did. Because <laughs> you told me about it. I don't have no stories. <laughs> you don't want no problems. You don't want the smoke. But, um, <laughs> but yeah. I've been we, so scared in my entire life. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, I tell you, didn't play. Like, I think she came and was like, this is real boot camp. Like, I know y'all making a movie, but like, I'm here with a mission, and y'all going to get in line. Um, I think the one story he's mentioning is it was my birthday. We were in Mississippi, and they had already started their kind of routine of learning what we were going to do. I walk in like, hey, how, you know, how we feeling? And they were not looking at me. <laughs> they were like this, because she was going to get in that ass if they were not. Um, so we love Octavia. She held us down. She made sure we looked good on and off camera. So we love you. We love you, sis. I wish we could keep hanging out with you all night, but it is unfortunately time to go. But I really want to give you the stage one last time. You gave such a beautiful introduction. Last words. Oh, thank you. Um, I just want to say thank you to everybody who came out tonight. Um, thank you to the Toronto International Film Festival. I have applied to this festival with many short films. This is the first film I've ever had to be accepted <laughs> at Toronto. So, <laughs> it's not you, it's not, but I just, to me, this is one of my dreams to be here, part of this community of filmmakers and artists. I can't really put into words how much it means to me just to say thank you. And in terms of this film, like I said, this is for all the people that feel forgotten, to remember that you matter, 
Um, and I wanted to, you know, take a moment to dedicate this to my mother. You know, my mom, it is hard to do something that you haven't been taught to do. No one ever loved my mother unconditionally. And because of that, she was unable to give that to me. And I just hope and believe that all of us here together can support this film and make sure that all those other mothers out there who have the problems that my mother has, has an example of what it is to have someone love them unconditionally. Thank you so much. It means everything to me. Thank you so much.